Return of the Mount Hua Sect Chapter 131 Now my work starts. A flustered look was evident on Yun Zhong's face when he saw the numerous Wudang swordsmen rush at him. Uh, it shouldn't be like this. Are you going to call me a coward? N no that's not it. Let's see. There are four of them. No, this is unreasonable. Yun Zhong stepped back. Since he was the first to win his fight, the enemies all flocked to him. You shouldn't do this. You talk a lot. No, not that. Yun Zhong groaned. I'm not the strongest of us. I'm the weak link. Baek Chun Sasuke is the strongest. If he's busy, then go to the second strongest person. Yun Zhong's reaction was so intense that the disciples of Wudang could only blankly stare at him. They couldn't even feel angry when they saw his face, which seemed to shamefully curse his unreasonable circumstances. Who's the second strongest? When someone asked that question, Yun Zhong immediately pointed to a person. There, over there, see that? Suspicion arose, and the expressions of the Wudang disciples turned strange as they looked at the person Yun Zhong had pointed out. That person. Their sword was cutting through space. This person displayed Mount Hua's swordsmanship, but it was clearly different from what the others had shown. Her steps flowed seamlessly and softly, as if swimming through the sky. It wasn't as fancy, but much more graceful. Yu Yi So's sword flitted through the air. The space where her swordsmanship was unfolded felt too distant for the observers to pursue. The eyes of the Wudang disciples trembled. So it's not me! Yun Zhong couldn't stand the injustice of being the one targeted and spoke out. Yu Yi So was originally strong. Normally, Yu Yi So should have had a position as one of the second-class disciple representatives in the last Zhongnam conference. Although she was young, she took to the sword quickly and showed exceptional talent. To be honest, except for Baek Chun, there were very few who could beat her. Such a person then came under the tutelage of Chong Myung. She's insane too! While others were desperately trying to hide away from him, she eagerly chased after Chong Myung to learn as much as possible and unconditionally absorbed and mastered everything he had to teach. After two years of that, she had reached a level where her swordsmanship was unmatched. Yun Zheng couldn't accurately gauge whether or not she could defeat Baek Chun, but he at least believed that she wouldn't be pushed back easily. Thud. The disciple going against her eventually collapsed. A hushed calm spread and dominated the hall. <coughs> A sharp scream then broke the cold silence. The disciple tasked with defeating Jogul grabbed his leg and screamed. Blood was dripping down from a long gash along the man's right thigh. Four. In an instant, four people had collapsed. Most shocking of all was that Jin Hyun was among the four that had fallen. Sayang, To a single man? The disciples of Wudang bit their lips. Jin Hyun was a step above the others. In other words, if Jin Hyun was defeated, none of them could defeat Baek Chun one on one. And everyone else would suffer too. Six disciples remained. Four had fallen. A lot could be inferred from the results. As long as Jin Hyun was among the fallen, it was safe to say that the six still standing were weaker than those four on Mount Hua's side. What's more, Mount Hua's disciples had defeated their opponents and remained completely unscathed. Could the six of them change the result then? It wasn't a difficult calculation to make. The remaining Wudang disciples couldn't bring themselves to move and trembled in place. Baek Chun, who immediately recognized that they had lost their motivation, quietly asked, Do you want to continue? A cornered rat would even bite a cat. Baek Chun had no intention of driving the Wudang to the edge. If we keep going, you may stand a chance. But if the wounded don't get medical attention right now, they might be in severe trouble. Is this matter enough for you to sacrifice the future of your Sayongs? Hmm. Stand down. 
We won this time. Take your Saihungs, heal them, and leave Nanyang before the night is over. Your Saihung made this promise on his honor, so the Wudang shall no longer involve themselves in the Huayong sect's affairs. Your path's edge training hall will be rooted out too. Jin Mu bit his lip as he looked at his Saihungs gathering around him. Once Jin Hyun was down, he became the one in charge. Something needed to be done in this situation. But we already lost our chance to win. Continuing to fight would increase the damage suffered. So after much thought, Jin Mu put his hands together. We thank Mount Hua for its kindness. Today, we will admit our defeat. Beg Chun nodded. I won't see you off. Yes. Jin Mu winced, seeing the healthy disciples supporting the wounded. He took one final look at the disciples of Mount Hua and headed out the main gate. Move! The Wudang disciples pushed aside the audience that gathered to watch the event as they hurried to their subsect's main building. The people of Nanyang that watched everything unfold were left in awe, unable to say anything. They couldn't follow martial arts at that level. All they saw was something flash and flicker before seeing people collapse. However, anyone with eyes could see that the Wudang's retreat signaled Mount Hua's victory. Oh my god! The Wudang sect! Mount Hua took them down! Who here could have predicted this outcome? Mount Hua defeating the Wudang. Of course, the outcome of one fight doesn't mean that Mount Hua is stronger than Wudang. It was impossible to discuss the differences between the two sects based solely on a fight between their disciples. Although it wasn't much, it was still clear at this moment Mount Hua defeated Wudang. Huh? They say Mount Hua is regaining its former glory. It seems like it's really true. Right? Isn't that great? They fought the Wudang to save the Huayong sect. Going to such a place is worth it. Ah, it's worth going. The crowd that watched the fight from outside the collapsed wall began to mumble and murmur amongst themselves. Beg Chun glanced at them briefly and then turned away. He steadily approached Wei Lipsan. Sect leader. Ah, ah, yes. Wei Lipsan suddenly came to his senses and looked at Beg Chun, but he was completely speechless. Mount Hua has successfully defeated the Huayong sect. Beg Chun and the Saiyongs lined up together. Wei Lipsan bit his lips. His eyes moistened as he looked at these young disciples. As leader of the Huayong sect, I would like to express my gratitude to Mount Hua. When Wei Lipsan bowed, Beg Chun stood him up straight. You don't have to say that. We only did what we're supposed to do. Wei Lipsan was unable to look him in the eyes, and the disciples of Mount Hua smiled while looking at him, an emotional sight that would make anyone nod their heads. Wow, such a touching moment, eh? Why do you have to spoil everything, you bastard? Congratulations, sect leader Wei. It was so amazing. <laughs> You've been living as part of Mount Hua all this time. That Mount Hua. You're finally getting rewarded. Wei Lipsan's smile reached his ears. Thank you, thank you. Even after the Wudang disciples left, Wei Lipsan couldn't rest. The residents of Nanyang had come to congratulate him. Most of these people had taken a neutral stance when both subsects began their quarrel. Yet now, they tried to curry favor with the Huayong sect because they felt that the subsect had firmly taken control of Nanyang after defeating the Wudang sect. Despite being fully aware of that, Wei Lipsan greeted them with a smile. So what? This was only a privilege that only the victors could enjoy. It was a hundred times better to receive hollow congratulations and empty praises rather than lose everything and be forced to leave their home in defeat. Was there anyone that would disagree? I didn't think Mount Hua would be this strong. I didn't either. This must be why the sect leader was always so proud and confident. Please stop. Wei Lipsan forced a smile. He only hoped that this smile looked a little confident. 
after receiving greetings from the guests, as well as the apologies of the disciples that fled the sect, Wei Lipsan was able to wrap up the situation and return to the main building of the sect. His body still hadn't recovered from his fight the other day, but his heart had lightened and his mind felt refreshed. For such a day to come. How could he not be happy? He received so much today. First, he confirmed with his own eyes that his hallowed sect, which he thought was ruined, had finally been completely resurrected. What's more, they rushed straight over to help him without hesitating for even a moment. Father, what you said wasn't wrong. It was thanks to the words of his late father that he was able to see this day. Wei Lipsan walked with a spring in his step. The heroes that defended the Huayong sect were here now. Wei Lipsan thought that perhaps they would also be celebrating their achievements and toasting over a feast. I need to apologize. He felt that he should apologize for not trusting them and being annoyed at them. He also wanted to discuss the future of Mount Hua with them and make a toast. Wei Lipsan opened the door to the main building and shouted, You must have waited a long... But his voice faltered. No, no, you crazy bastard, stop it! What are you doing now, you brat? Catch him, catch that bastard right now! Items were scattered all around. Chairs flew through the sky, and lanterns that were hanging on the ceiling had fallen to the ground and set the floor ablaze. Only one thought passed through Wei Leepsan's mind as he bore witness to this chaos. Did the Wudang attack us again? No, that wasn't possible. Then what was the situation? Puck. He saw Jogul, who was charging at Chongmyung, get kicked and collapse screaming. I'm sure he defeated one of the Wudang disciples earlier. A man like that was kicked away so easily. Maybe I'm dreaming. No. This is really happening. Chong Myung, who pushed away his Sihyungs, grabbed a bundle of luggage and began to take something out. Clothes? What kind of clothes could he be taking out in this mad situation? What? It was a completely black outfit. Clothing that tightly clung to the body and obscured the wearer. <laughs> That's definitely the garb of thieves and assassins. No. What the hell are you doing wearing that, you brat? In an instant, Chong Myung draped himself in the mysterious outfit and looked at his Sahyongs. Baek Chun, sweating nervously, raised his hand in an effort to calm Chong Myung. It seemed as if he was trying to stop a mad dog from growling. Ch Chong Myung, calm down and think this over. The Wudang sect is gone. There's no need to do this. Gone? R right They left. Our work is done. Now all we need to do is return to Mount Hua. Didn't the sect leader tell you? Don't create trouble. Chong Myung smiled brightly and nodded his head. Ah, right. Sasuk, Sago, and my dear Sayongs, your work is done. Don't worry. There was a lot that happened in your fights that I didn't like, but I'll spare you the nagging since we won. Except for you, Jogul Sayong. Why me? Chong Myung smiled at Jogul, who was flustered. But Sasuk... Yes, only Sasuke's work is done. So, he put the cloth over his face and tightened it, exposing only his eyes, which looked twisted as hell. Now, my work starts. Just wait here, I'll tell you what kind of conspiracies those bastards have plotted. You're the one making dubious plots. See you. Catch that bastard. Stop, stop him, block his path. But despite the desperate rush of the others, Chung Myung, managed to avoid their grasp and flew out the door. Then, Chongmyung winked at Wei Lipsan, who was standing near the door, before he vanished into the shadows. Ugh, we're doomed. Th this can't... The hopeless voices of Mount Hua's disciples, who stared into the distance where Chongmyung disappeared, made the situation seem incredibly bizarre. Wei Lipsan looked up at the night sky with a smile. Father, something seems seriously wrong around here. It felt like he could hear his father's voice echoing the same sentiment back to him.
Chapter 132 Now my work starts. Sayang, are you awake? Jin Hyun slowly opened his eyes and frowned, reflected in his vision with Jin Mu's face and the dark night sky behind him. Th this is. We're on our way back to Udang. We haven't gotten off the mountain path yet. Jin Hyun jumped to his feet when he heard that. <clears throat> Your internal wounds are deep. You need to be careful, Sayong. Wounds? Jin Hyun's eyes trembled. He suddenly recalled the torrent of plum blossoms that flew towards him. I lost. It didn't take Jin Hyun long to accept the situation. He couldn't deny what he had seen with his own eyes. And what happened to the others? Sayong fell and everyone else lost. So I admitted defeat and stepped down. Jin Hyun glared indignantly at Jin Mu. However, he didn't say anything. Nothing can be done. He wanted to curse and blame Jin Mu for not fighting to the end, but that was just his pride driving his emotions. Once Jin Hyun and the others had fallen, the results was already apparent. Even if the remaining disciples had rushed in, nothing would have changed. Rather, it was wiser for the Sajes to withdraw without risking further injuries. Well done. I apologize, Sayong. No, it isn't your fault. It is mine. I was lacking. Jin Hyun bit his lip. A clear defeat. An irresistible sense of defeat began to weigh heavily on Jin Hyun. What made it more painful was that this defeat wasn't due to any mistake on his part. I didn't even see what the sword was till the end. He had lost purely because of a lack of skill. He had lost to the righteous sword of Mount Hua, a man known to be even weaker than Mount Hua's divine dragon. And that realization was unbearable. The fact that all the Sajes were defeated means their strength isn't just limited to one or two people either. The second class disciples of Mount Hua are stronger than the second class disciples of Wudang. How could this absurdity be believed? And the training hall. For now, I told the training hall leader to empty out by tomorrow morning because of Sayong's agreement. Jin Hyun closed his eyes. It was promised on his honor that their subsect would leave Nanyang if they were defeated by Mount Hua. The promise he made without much thought had ensnared them now. I've thrown dirt on Wudang's name. There were a lot of people who saw the fight between Mount Hua and Wudang. As long as those people have eyes and mouths, they will surely spread the word about what happened. Just as the Zhongnam sect had become a stepping stone for Mount Hua's soaring reputation, Wudang was now bound to become kindling that would further fuel their prestige. No, that isn't what matters now. Reputation was a secondary concern. Subsects were one thing, but the other reason they wanted Nanyang for themselves wasn't something so trivial. Jin Hyun tightly bit his lip and spoke. Jin Mu. Yes, Sai Hyung. You should head to the main sect right now and inform them of the situation here. Sorry? The Sajes will remain here and tend to their injuries while awaiting further instructions from headquarters. This isn't a situation where we can just walk back easily. I understand. Jin Hyun's face hardened. I've kept my promise to leave Nanyang and I'll keep my promise not to get involved in matters related to the Huayong sect. But I never said anything about returning to the Wudang sect. Jin Hyun smiled. He knew he was being thick-skinned. It was shameful to break a promise made on one's honor, but sometimes you must sacrifice yourself for a cause. Jin Mu, go ahead. Yes, Sai Hyung. It was then. You don't have to. Everyone's heads turned towards the voice. They seemed to see bushes shaking as a man emerged. S Sasuke! How? Everyone was shocked. The face of a man they were intimately familiar with appeared from the foliage. The man that appeared looked at Jin Hyun and frowned. You were defeated. Jin Hyun bit his lips. I apologize. You lost. Did Mount Hua send a greater number of disciples than we did? Or was there some other sect supporting them? Jin Hyun couldn't bring himself to reply. He couldn't help it. 
it was very difficult to expose his shame to the man who appeared, because this man was his Sasuk, Mujin. Mujin. Anyone who's heard this name would immediately recall a certain title. The Three Swords of Wudang. The Mu Disciples were the first class disciples of the Wudang sect. The Three Swords of Wudang were known to be the strongest among them. And one of them was standing here right now. The sect leader felt ill at ease, so he asked me to come down and monitor the situation. From what I've seen, it would appear the sect leader's insight wasn't wrong, Jin Yun. Yes, Sasuke. Tell me in your own words, what happened in Nanyang? Jin Mu, who tried to assist Jin Hyun, stepped forward. Sasuke, I will tell- Jin Mu, you don't need to go out of your way. Sayong! Jin Hyun, who analyzed the situation silently, finally spoke. I'll explain, Sasuke. Hmm. Mu Jin stroked his beard. According to what Jin Hyun had told him, none of the second class disciples could stand against Mount Hua. This was even more serious than Jin Hyun's defeat. Mount Hua is that strong. It was conceptually impossible. Martial arts are passed down from one generation to another. If the top of the hierarchy is strong, the bottom will also be strong. But if the top is weak, then the bottom is weak. Occasionally, some anomalies occur, but not across generations like this. Mount Hua was on the verge of collapse. Therefore, the martial arts of the elders and senior generations are clearly insignificant now. Does it make any sense that the juniors in Mount Hua have somehow become stronger than the disciples of the Wudang sect? <sighs> Mu Jin, who was thinking, tilted his head and looked at Jin Hyun. There's no way this child will lie to me. Jin Hyun. Yes, Sasuk. You made a promise on your name. Yes, but my honor and such... You! Mu Jin spoke in a whisper. It might not be a huge deal to get your name dirty, but where does your name and honor end? Who will even care about your name? If you behave disgracefully, people will curse the Wudang sect, not you. Don't you understand that doing something like that would defile the name of the Wudang sect? I apologize. Mu Jin raised an eyebrow while looking at Jin Hyun with displeasure. A swordsman shouldn't speak so easily, and your honor should never be treated so lightly. Yes, give up on Nanyang. Sasuk! After all, Nanyang is just a place we wanted to use so that others wouldn't set their sights on our goal. With that being the case, it's better to skip over Nanyang altogether and head straight for the Sword Tomb. But we haven't figured out the location for the Sword Tomb yet. Isn't that why we needed to stay in Nanyang? Don't worry, I've deciphered the location of the Sword Tomb. Ah! Jin Hyun's eyes shook. There was no need to waste time in Nanyang if that was the case. They could go straight to the site. It's a shame that we lost to Mount Hua. But compared to what we have to do now, such things are trivial. There will be plenty of opportunities to redeem yourself in the future. So get your mind straight. Yes, Sasuke. Jin Hyun's eyes widened and lit up. If the sword tomb can be opened, we can repay them for this disgrace. Those who are seriously injured should head back now. Support from the main sect will come soon. So don't bother overdoing it here. Only those who can work may come with me. Mu Jin frowned when he saw the disciples' hesitation. They all wished to travel with him despite their injuries. I told you just now that a swordsman should evaluate things calmly. Are you going to be a burden to your Sayongs and Sajes? Only then did three people step back and bow their heads. Sorry, Sasuk. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Don't apologize for standing, despite your injuries. Go back and get treated. I will handle the rest here. Don't tell me that you lack faith in me. Of course, we believe in you, Sasuke. That's enough then. Mu Jin smiled. Go and wait. Tell the main sect what happened in Nanyang, and tell them that I went straight to the sword tomb with the others. 
Yes! As the others moved away, Mujin looked at Jinhyun. Will you be able to come? I will not be a burden. Well then. Mujin nodded his head. Then follow me. Suddenly, Mujin turned his head to one side. Sasuke? Mujin frowned while looking at one of the bushes nearby. Who is it? Huh? The gaze of Jinhyun and the other disciples quickly shifted to follow Mujin's. Step. 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 The sound of someone walking on the grass could be heard as a man covered in black clothing slowly emerged from the darkness. Black. A completely black outfit with black masking his face as well. Anyone could tell that this man was suspicious and strange. He calmly walked out and stood in front of the crowd before speaking. Hi, a robber passing by has something to ask you. What's a sword tomb? A passing robber? Did he just reveal himself as a robber? Mujin's eyes fluttered. This. Mujin is proud to say that he had experienced quite a lot in life. But this was the first time he'd seen something so nonsensical. What kind of robber identifies himself as a robber? In front of Wudang's disciples, no less. A robber roaming this remote mountain? Uh... The masked man was slightly startled before responding. Maybe I'm a bandit then. Has he gone mad? Mujin and the other disciples shared the same thought, but one of them felt a similar sort of feeling from this robber's body. M maybe The words escaped his lips before he even finished sorting his thoughts. Mount Hua's divine dragon! The masked man tilted his head. No! I didn't do anything to give myself away. No, I'm definitely not that kind of person. Jin Hyun's face contorted. The tea is already spilled, you brat. Still, as a disciple of Mount Hua, I thought you had some honor. But hiding your face and committing robbery, have you no shame? Jin Hyun spoke to the mast. No, to Chong Myung, who shrugged. Well, that's not me, so that doesn't apply. You are seriously. Hey. You seem to misunderstand something. Hmm? Soon, you'll admit that I'm not me. That's usually the case. It was something that a lot of people had experienced. If you continue to mock people, Jin Hyun silenced himself as he was about to yell. His eyes had fallen on Mu Jin, who had raised his hand. Then, Mu Jin smiled. You're saying that you are a robber and not a disciple of Mount Hua. Oh, finally, there's someone here that knows how to communicate. Right, you could never be a disciple of Mount Hua. Huh? Mujin unsheathed his sword and pointed ahead. I'm just cutting down a robber. Mount Hua's disciple never existed here in the first place, right? Huh? Chong Myung exclaimed. This man is smart. If you remove your mask and apologize to us now, we can resolve this moderately. However, if you keep fooling around and wasting time, then you'll see just how heartless my sword is. Oh, really? Chong Myung smiled. Then let me also tell you in advance. If you tell me about this sword tomb and what you know, then I'll make sure you can still walk away on your own feet. Otherwise, you won't be able to return on foot, I assure you. Mujin smiled. They say Mount Hua has gotten stronger. What an embarrassing thing to say. At least try to hide your damn identity, you idiot. Among them, they say that the one called Mount Hua's Divine Dragon is the strongest. <laughs> You're going to make me blush. Jin Hyun gave up. It was impossible for him to interpret this man's words. Well then, Mujin swung his sword. Let's take a look at how great the Divine Dragon is, shall we? You don't seem to understand. I'm not from Mount Hua. Chong Myung drew his sword. There's a plum pattern on your sword though. Chong Myung frowned. Pretend like you didn't see it. Be polite. Mujin's smile deepened. Of course I will. His eyes were shining. That way, 
Even if you get seriously injured, I won't need to worry about any consequences. Prepare yourself. Even after all these years, the people of Wudang never change. Chengmen raised his sword and aimed it at Mu Jin. Can I say one more thing? What is it? Chongmyung smiled slyly, and he spoke. Be careful with that head of yours. It's turned into a habit for me. The smile faded from Mu Jin's face. Chapter 133 Now my work starts. Mu Jin a disciple of the 22nd generation of the great Wudang sect. One of the Wudang sect's first-class disciples standing among the three swords of Wudang. He was known as the Clear Flowing Sword. He had quite a few other names to describe him as well. What was certain was his role within Wudang's upper echelon. Basically, the sect leader and elders decide a sect's plans and operations while the ones who execute such matters are the first-class disciples. Mujin is one of those first-class disciples. Everyone he met praised him and everyone in the world supported him as well. But there was an exception to everything. He met someone who completely disregarded his existence for the first time today. Mount Hua's Divine Dragon. Mujin glared at the masked man in front of him with cold eyes. Is he some mindless idiot that doesn't think things through? There is no way such a fool could defeat the second-class disciples of Wudang. Mu Jin thought that Chong Myung must have some additional trick up his sleeve. But it was overly arrogant to believe that petty tricks would be enough to ignore Mu Jin. The tip of Mu Jin's sword quietly headed for Chong Myung. No further conversation was necessary. If there was something that either wanted, they would clash their swords and take it. Such is the way of the martial world. Infinite light on the path. Mujin recited a sutra, and Chong Myung shook his head as if such words were annoying. The form's good. There was a strong feeling of stability. Even seen through Chong Myung's critical eyes, there weren't any extremely offensive flaws. There's a reason that the second-class disciples showed such excessive respect for this man. Chong Myung didn't know who this man was, but he was certain the man must have a solid reputation in Gang Ho. The second-class disciples turned out to be nothing. However, it wasn't some second-class disciple in front of Chong Myung now, but a true swordsman of Wudang that was aiming for Chong Myung. He was a warrior with a razor-sharp momentum that seemed keen to sever flesh at any moment. That fact caused Chong Myung's lips to curl into a smile. At this level, he is naturally the best among those Chong Myung had faced after his reincarnation. But... Ah, just one thing before we begin. Mu Jin's eyebrows twitched. You aren't going to foolishly pretend that nothing's happened, right? As if, I just wanted to make a bet. Bet? Yes. Chong Myung grinned as he continued. It would be pretty miserable if we gave our best efforts, won, and got nothing out of it, right? So how about the loser grants one thing to the winner? I want to hear about the sword tomb or something like that. Mu Jin looked at Chong Myung. Despite Chong Myung's face being obscured by a mask, Mu Jin could see a smile oozing from his eyes. How dare you smile in front of me? Sure. Oh, are you really okay with it? Instead, if you lose, you'll have to take off that mask, bow your head in apology, and admit that Mount Hua is no match for the Wudang. Huh? You made a mistake. I'm not from Mount Hua. Uh, but that's fine. I'll do it. Chong Meng shrugged his shoulders. But don't try and take it back when you lose. Hearing that provocation, Mu Jin's face contorted. I am a disciple of Wudang. Bite your tongue. I will never go back on my word. Oh, so inspiring. Chong Myung smiled. <laughs> this is how kids are. If you scratch them a little, they start running wild. Now, 
Let's quit wasting time and get started. Bring it on. It was an attitude that clearly disrespected the opponent. Shortly after Chong Myung spoke, Mu Jin began to release a vicious and murderous aura. Sayang, will this be fine? Jin Hyun couldn't answer his saje. He struggled to understand just why he was unable to answer. The masked man was obviously Mount Hua's divine dragon, the outline of his body and his tone of voice. Above all, his insane attitude left no room for doubt. But we don't know anything about his skills. When they confronted the disciples of Mount Hua, this man sat behind and just watched them all. Not once had he pulled out his sword. Judging from that, perhaps he would be the strongest among the disciples of Mount Hua that were there. He won't take the stage for someone at your level. We raise our swords against those that match our skills. Right. That was what Jin Hyun's opponent said. The righteous sword of Hua. But even then, it should be impossible for Mount Hua's divine dragon to defeat Mu Jin. They had at least a 30 year age difference between them, and Mu Jin stands at the peak of power within his generation. This guy was planning on fighting someone with 30 years more experience than him. No matter how you looked at it, this fight was not between equals. However, was the outcome of every fight predetermined by the difference in age between the warriors? A genius might be able to battle against their seniors, but that should only extend one generation. How could it be possible to beat a man who is closer in age to one's grandfather than father? When Mu Jin joined the Kangho, Chong Myung couldn't have even been born yet. The wealth of experience this man had was something Chong Myung could never measure up to in his short life. Jin Hyun was fully aware of all that. But, why do I feel this anxious? Jin Hyun bit his lip. He was surprised to see this man behaving so strongly and confidently here. Jin Hyun himself had lost the battle earlier this morning, something he had never imagined. So he couldn't calmly accept the situation. Chung Myung's relaxed posture made him even more anxious. No. Jin Hyun's eyes were bloodshot as he stared at him. It was shameful that Jin Hyun lost to the righteous sword of Hua, but that was as far as that goes. However, if Mu Jin lost to Chong Myung, then that would signal a true defeat. If that happens, the Wudang will always be considered lesser than Mount Hua. At least, it will remain so for as long as Chong Myung lives. That cannot happen. No way. Jin Hyun was beginning to lose his mind. Standing at the end of Mu Jin's sword was Chong Myung. Mu Jin believed that it may be a bit excessive to be dealing with a young swordsman nearly half his age. However, he had no plans to back down now. The opponent not only disregarded and disgraced the Wudang sect, but now he was directly picking a fight with him. It was only natural to punish such a person. Mount Hua's Divine Dragon. This young one's title. It was a name that even Mu Jin had grown tired of hearing. A divine dragon that erupted from the dying Mount Hua. It was rare to find such an exciting tale that ignited the imagination of others. The impetuous didn't hesitate to rank him among the strongest martial artists in the world. There hasn't been any significant activity from him since the Jongnam conference two years ago, so the excitement surrounding him had died down a bit. But in the end, fame is just a facade. What matters are the deeds done to earn that reputation. If all the Jongnam conference rumors were indeed true, then this man in front of Mu Jin, Chong Myung, was not to be underestimated. Which is why he has to be cut down right now. He glared at Chung Myung. At first glance, this man didn't seem to be very strong. Martial training develops the body. As a warrior trains, the key inside the body matures, and their growth can naturally be perceived by others 
even if they don't intend to show it off. Every movement becomes refined and follows the logic of their technique. The essence of their key flows out implicitly. Therefore, even without crossing swords, one can determine the strength of their opponent to some extent. However, Mujin couldn't feel anything at all from this masked man in front of him. If he hadn't gotten so close and tried to enact some ridiculous plan to deceive him, Mujin might have really believed he was a robber. No, he would still be an insane robber though. He couldn't understand. Was he strong or weak? Was he sane or had he completely lost his mind? It seemed as if all the chaos in the world had coalesced and taken human form. Enough with the staring contest. Can we get started? Are you asking me to move first? Yes. Me? Mujin's eyebrows twitched. Did he really expect him to jump in? He claimed that he wasn't one of Mount Hua's disciples, but it was clear that this man was Cheng Meng. But now, he wanted to give Mujin the first strike in battle a man with two generations of seniority. Your arrogance is unmatched. Fine, then I'll come. Don't regret it, though. You! A scream that only lasted a moment. But Something brushed past Mujin's face as the air cracked. Drip. Only when warm blood dripped down his cheek did Mujin realize that it was Chong Myung's sword. Consider that my greeting. Chong Myung chuckled. At that moment, Mujin gave up any feelings of disrespect he had for Chong Myung. If he had aimed for my neck, my head would have already gone flying. Careless. No, he wasn't the least bit careless. Chong Myung's sword was several times faster than he thought. Mujin bit his lips tightly. An indefensible mistake happened, but there was still room for redemption. So, Mujin clenched his hand, holding the sword. Thank you for your consideration. A thanks? Chong Myung shrugged his shoulders. If you're grateful, then do it properly, rather than doing it in moderation. Of course. A light shone in Mujin's eyes. I was thinking the same. Mujin's feet slammed to the ground as he rushed towards Chong Myung at a blurring speed. Chong Myung's eyes shone. Right! The clear flowing sword, Mujin. Even Chong Myung, who wasn't interested in current affairs, had heard this name at least once. It can be said that he was rather famous. So, show me everything you have. So Chong Myung could finally find out what difference was there between the martial world a hundred years ago compared to now. How great have the martial arts developed over the years? Or had it weakened after being overturned in the war with the Heavenly Demon Sect? The Jongnam Sect didn't serve as a proper gauge. Their martial arts had been sullied and deteriorated. Moreover, Chong Myung's opponents were only second-class disciples. They weren't strong enough. But Mujin served as a proper metric. Woom. Mujin's sword was wrapped in a deep blue key. Is that Tai Ching? Something very similar to Sword Key rushed ahead like waves. Endless Great River. The endless swordsmanship of the Wudang. To maintain that mighty flow, a huge amount of Qi is needed. This is the reason that Wudang's second class disciples cannot serve as a proper measure. The martial arts of the Wudang sect are amazing. It is a true art focused on long-term development. The Wudang's unique methods of receiving their opponent's techniques to flow softly and seize the opportunity to counter and overwhelm the enemy is complemented by their enormous reserve of Qi. It can be seen here. The Qi continued to stably flow from the sword like a raging river. Chong Myung narrowed his eyes slightly as he looked at this deep blue sword key rushing towards him. Clear flowing sword. A man worthy of the name. But this much won't be enough. Chong Myung's sword slowly pointed ahead. At the tip of his sword 
was a glimmer of key sharing the red color of the setting sun. Woom. The sunset red-colored sword key parted the raging river from side to side. Mujin was shocked. He cut it. He had split his sword key. Nonsense! Before he even realized it, Mujin was shouting out loud. Wudang's sword key was meant to be endless. A sword key that never breaks and ceaselessly continues to propagate. But that sword was split so easily. <laughs> Mujin retrieved his sword and once again imbued key into it. Endless Great River. The key that was emitted from the sword flowed into a boundless blue, growing deeper and more vibrant. The key that was brought from Mujin's dungeon fully resonated with his sword. The sword key of Wudang is the sword of nature. Nature is benevolent, but sometimes more ferocious than anything. Just as humans cannot stop the waters of a coursing river, fighting against this flowing sword key seemed futile. Perfect. Mujin had full confidence in the technique he had just unleashed. No matter how talented the opponent was, he would not be able to handle this. It was the most perfectly executed swordsmanship of his sect. With this sword, just then, a flash of red followed after an annoyed voice. At the same time, Mujin's sword key, which was rushing for the opponent, was bounced back in all directions and crushed. <coughs> an enormous recoil traveled down Mujin's wrist and he lost his balance for a moment, causing him to fall to the ground. Thud. He looked at the masked man who was waving his sword in front of him. <coughs> There's nothing to see here either. The masked man shook his head and grabbed his sword tightly as he walked towards Mujin. What nonsense! The three swords of Wudang? With that ability? Let's start with a light beating first. Chomyung rushed towards Mujin without delay. Chapter 134 Now My Work Starts The sword came falling down. Mujin reflexively rolled his body to the side. A lazy donkey roll. It referred to how the technique looked like a tired donkey rolling around. It was an absolutely shameful sight to show others. But Mujin didn't have time to consider that now. Kwang. Soon after, the ground exploded and was hollowed out at his former position. Having seen such a destructive force, Mujin's face turned stiff. What if he had been hit? Instant death. What? You avoided it? Chongmyung, who had just pierced the floor, looked at the trembling Mujin. Mujin bit his lip and got up. With a greater sense of caution than before, he stared at Chongmyung. He, he's strong. He could feel the hair on his body standing up. One blow, just that one blow, was enough to estimate the true strength of this opponent. Perhaps, this man was a formidable enemy unlike anything Mujin had ever faced before. Contrary to Chongmyung's mischievous and insane attitude, his skills were genuinely on a whole different level. Mujin couldn't understand why such a powerful opponent would even bother attempting such strange behavior while disguising himself. But now, Mujin recognized that he couldn't judge this man by his appearance and had to let go of his preconceived notions. Mujin bit his lip. Does this mean I'm still trapped by my previous thoughts? Disrespect is a privilege Guaranteed to the strong. But now, he was clearly weak compared to Chongmyung. <sighs> Mujin took a deep breath and looked at Chongmyung. What are you doing? It was unexpected, but Mujin wasn't agitated this time and managed to remain calm. Oh? Well, a wudang is a wudang. 
Chung Myung smiled as he walked towards his opponent. Mu Jin's sword moved up and down lightly, following the movement of his steps. Chua! With the sound of rushing waves or something being cut, a blue key began to overflow from Mu Jin's sword once again. Clear flowing sword. He was a man that truly lived up to his title. Tut! Mujin exclaimed as he shook the sword. Clean, endless river. A scene where dozens of thin blue lines were unfolding like silk emerged. Even the disciples of Wudang, who were already familiar with Mujin and his swordsmanship, stood in stunned silence with their mouths agape. Every one of these silken strands had the same amount of strength imbued within. The unbreakable sword key is unique to the Wudang. Unlike common sword key, this technique required several times greater mental and internal energy. It was soft, infinitely soft, but hidden inside the softness is an irresistible strength. Truly, the most splendid sword key. Oh? After a brief exclamation, a smile formed on Chung Myung as he dashed through the dozens of sword key lines flying at him. His form seemed to blur as he stepped and he soared into the air, dark fragrance floating. As he utilized Mount Hua's light footwork, Chung Myung's body began to swim through the torrential blue sword key that poured down on him. The scene reflected the sight of a scarlet butterfly fluttering over a raging waterfall. Jin Hyun's eyes widened. The level was different. Jin Hyun thought he was fully aware of Mu Jin's level, but his actual abilities had vastly exceeded all expectations, while Chung Myung's skills were at a level that he could never have even imagined. This is a bloody battle between masters. His entire body felt like it was on fire. All thoughts of winning or losing had disappeared from his mind. He simply wanted to watch this battle without missing a single moment. Perhaps the other disciples had similar thoughts, as the others focused so deeply that not even the sound of breathing could be heard. The waves of sword key severed the earth as they came crashing down. Who could have imagined that those silky waves, which seemed to flow softly, could contain such power? Merely brushing past, it would split flesh open and crack the bones. But even more remarkable than Mu Jin, who displayed such brilliant swordsmanship, was Chung Myung, who casually traversed through such an incredible technique. Swoosh! The sword key narrowly passed by Chung Myung's head. Chung Myung, who lifted his sword lightly, hurried through the torrent towards Mu Jin. Light movements, without any harshness. There was a faint smile on his face as he moved through the air towards Mu Jin. This is how it should be. This was the swordsmanship of Wu Dang that he was familiar with. Maybe the three swords of Wu Dang are more deserving of their names than I thought. However, this much isn't good enough. At that moment, shh, along with the sound of slicing wind, a new wave of sword key flew toward Chung Myung at a speed incomparable to before. But Chung Myung wasn't the least bit flustered. The smile on his lips grew wider. The sword of Chung Myung gently stretched out, cutting through the waves. Chwak! The waves of sword key that came rushing in were severed left and right by Chung Myung's sword. Chung Myung pierced his sword deep into the waves as he moved further up. Pa! The scene of pouring waves collapsed in an instant. Chung Myung, who ascended farther with the help of the waves, fell down in the moonlight. Mu Jin's face went stiff the instant he saw this. Tut! It wasn't easy to stop such violent sword key. Chong Myung's abilities exceeded the realm of ordinary swordsmanship. Now that he had escaped the waves of Qi, Mu Jin's sword felt wasted and continued traveling in the wrong direction. Thanks to that, gaps were revealed. Chong Myung quickly flew towards Mu Jin, the moon shining behind him. 
Huh? Mujin extended his left arm towards Cheng Myung. A long, elongated thorn-like key extended towards Cheng Myung. Graceful palm. A technique representative of the wudang. The energy flowed smoothly like a stream of water. However, the power inside it was second to none. Cheng Myung, who was still descending, kicked the air behind him. The graceful palm swept across his side and continued into the sky. It was then, Cheng Myung's face stiffened and his body twisted midair. The palm technique had shifted direction midair and came flying back at him from behind. Whirling palm too? A technique that cannot be used unless one is at an advanced level. Good. Mujin was alert and predicted where Cheng Myung would move in order to seize this opportunity. Cheng Myung straightened his leg, pulled back, and kicked at the approaching danger. Kwang! A loud explosion erupted in this once quiet area. Cheng Myung used the recoil from kicking away the whirling palm technique and rushed towards Mujin at an incredible speed. Cha! Mujin, who recovered his sword, went stiff and hurriedly lifted his sword. And Mujin began to trace a soft circle in the air with his sword with narrowed eyes. A sword key that was both white and black covered this circle. W- Wisdom sword! Jinhyun unconsciously exclaimed, nearly screaming. The Taiji Wisdom Sword, a sword technique that symbolized the highest level of swordsmanship in Wudang, an incomprehensible sword that no one had been able to complete in ages. Sasuke has already begun learning this sword. Jinhyun clenched his fists tightly. Clench. There were moments of doubt, but the match would end if this technique could be used. The Taiji Wisdom Sword is invincible. No matter how talented he is, escaping from that sword is... It was then... No, you bastard! Cheng Myung's sword shone a sunset red as it struck through the glowing black key and slashed down the wisdom sword technique that had formed in the air. Kwang! The taiji that had formed was broken. <gasps> Mujin shook and began to cough blood from the impact. Dud! Falling to the ground, he grabbed his mouth as blood continued to spew out. It seemed like he had suffered internal injuries. Mujin's eyes trembled, and he looked at Cheng Myung in disbelief. <sighs> How? He wanted to win. The opponent was too strong. The Wudang's honor would have been trampled over at the rate things were going. So, even though he was ordered not to use it, he utilized the Taiji Wisdom Sword. The Taiji Wisdom Sword is invincible. It should have been simple to defeat Cheng Myung using it. But a single strike, it collapsed with just one attack. How could such a thing happen? Mu Jin couldn't understand. Tak! Cheng Myung landed on the floor with a distorted face. Even though he wore a mask, it was apparent from his eyes that he was frowning. What the hell are you doing? Hmm? What was he talking about? Huh. Kids these days, bringing out sword techniques that aren't even fully trained. Mujin was shocked. Shouldn't you already know this since you're a bastard of Wudang? Hey, will you get better results just because you use more advanced techniques? Then why bother learning the basics? Just go and learn the strongest technique right from the start. Oh, uh, even if it means death, you should stick to what you can use confidently. How could you foolishly try and use an unfamiliar sword technique? If this was a battlefield, you'd already be dead. Chong Myung clicked his tongue. This is the problem. This was the reason that Chong Myung taught Man Hua the Seven Sages Sword and not the Plum Blossom Sword Technique. There is a reason why all sects pass on their martial arts in stages. Those who fail to master the basics are bound to break down one day. How could anyone that fails to master the Seven Sages Sword even hope to learn the Plum Blossom Sword Technique? You'll get eaten by the sword. Like Mujin now. An improperly learned technique is like a poison. 
If Mujin hadn't used the Taiji Wisdom Sword, he would have been able to endure for a while longer. A hollow boulder can be crushed by a dense stone. A fancy sword that only scratches the surface isn't as useful as fully mastered basics. Mujin's eyes fluttered. Only then did he realize what a mistake he had made. What I've built till now. Taiji Wisdom Sword. He had been mesmerized by the technique's reputation. Mujin believed that if he could fully master that technique, he would be invincible throughout the world. He had abandoned the basics he had stacked up for a fleeting nothingness. He forgot that he wasn't growing. Mujin struggled to get up, and with trembling hands, he spoke. Thank you for teaching me. He lost. However, he had learned a valuable lesson that he would never forget. So even in the face of this crushing defeat, he had no regrets. Mujin expressed his sincere gratitude to Chongmyung with a refreshing smile. Chongmyung smiled in return and responded, Hey! Yes. What's with you acting like this is all over? Come here, you still need a beating. Mujin was visibly flustered. He raised his head, looked up, and saw Chongmyung's raging eyes. What? Why is he so angry? But Chongmyung simply grabbed his sword and slowly approached. Clearly, he had no intention of resolving Mujin's burning question. All sorts of petulant emotions was seen on his face. Chapter 135 Now My Work Starts Flustered, Mujin took a step back in doubt. Are you going to continue fighting? No, it isn't that I want to continue. I'm just going to beat you up a bit. Beat me up? Me? No matter how he thought about it, Mujin believed that Chong Myung's face seemed to carry some deep resentment. Unable to understand the situation, he urgently asked, I don't think I did anything to deserve such a grudge, right? Huh? Chong Myung stopped in his tracks and tilted his head to the side. You didn't? Nothing to deserve it? Chong Myung spoke as if it was absurd. Are you crazy? He laughed and continued. To a subsect that was doing well on its own? No, you struck at one of Mount Hua's subsects without reason and even knocked down the poor sect leader. Ugh, that was true. And if that wasn't enough, you forced them to close their doors and tried to drive them away. So what? You didn't do anything to deserve a grudge? Chong Myung's eyes were bloodshot as he focused his sights. Whatever, you bastards are always like this. Never thinking about what you've done, just doing whatever you want and placing the blame on others. You're the ones that picked the fight. What the hell? Chong Myung lifted his hand and made Mujin flinch. Ah, I still got a mask on. It would be a big deal if he got revealed here. Chong Myung pointed to the second class disciples and spoke. Let's just say that these kids are only following orders. Phew. Right, so what is their fault in this matter? The second class disciples that suddenly changed into children that blindly followed orders had tears in their eyes. However, Chong Myung ignored the distress and continued to speak. But not you, right? As a first class disciple, you should be held responsible for what the sect did. Chong Myung looked at him with strange eyes. Don't tell me, did you think I was a nice person who would simply send you off? No, but you said you're a robber, not a disciple of Mount Hua. At least stick to the identity you created. These bastards must have gone crazy. They gave us money for 30 years and you slapped the last good man in this era and tried to persecute him? What? You didn't do anything for me to hold a grudge over? Chong Myung's eyes shone. Of course, Chong Myung had nothing against them, but that's just how martial sects were. The resentment of the disciple is the resentment of the sect, and the resentment of the subsect is the resentment of the main sect. Chong Myung was currently bearing the grudge of the Huayong sect, not Mount Hua. Come here now, you little shit! You were beaten once, 
but you need to be beaten all day. The fact that you were sent shows just how much your sect is involved in this. I will show you exactly what the price of touching Mount Hua is. From Mu Jin's point of view, this seemed insane. How much had he really been involved? Everything that happened was decided by his superiors. Of course, Mu Jin also influenced the decision a bit, but he wasn't so involved that he had to take responsibility for it. What? Do you think it's unjust? Get flustered when you see death. The world is unfair. You get to live with the Wudang and take all the good things in life, live comfortably without worrying about the world, and now you want to run from your responsibilities and push the blame on others? Mu Jin flinched. Get your head together. A martial sect isn't what you think. If a child makes a mistake, he is cursed by the adults, and the lower ranks need to clean up the shit caused by the higher-ups. Just like Chong Myung was doing now. Ugh, am I speaking about myself too? Anyway, you committed a crime and it makes sense for you to be punished, so take it in stride. N no. As soon as Chong Myung was about to rush forward, Mu Jin grabbed his sword. Chong Myung looked at that and then spoke. Didn't I make it clear before? If you don't take the beating gently, you won't be able to walk back on your own two feet. Tch, I'm a man that keeps his promises. Mujin bit his lip. Looking back, he did remember something like that. Looking back, he did remember something like that. At that time, he thought it was just the arrogant words of a guy that didn't know his place. Mujin, who confirmed there was no room for compromise, had a hardened look on his face. At that time, Jin Hyun and Mujin briefly exchanged glances. Conflicted thoughts crept in. No one was around. In that case, it might be better for them to work together. They were flustered and injured. What's more, it seemed like this man had no intention of stepping down and letting them return. So they'd rather. It was that moment. Chong Ming rushed at Mujin, who struggled to make a decision. How is it? The sword in Chong Myung's hand slammed down violently, and Mu Jin's sword, which hadn't even taken the stance, was struck and bounced off Chong Myung's sword back into his own face. That after such a long time, Chong Myung took a huge step ahead with his right foot. There is still no progress! You bastards! <gasps> Blood gushed from Mu Jin's nose, which got hit by the tremendous force of Chong Myung's sword. At the same time, his waist bent excessively backward. My waist. It felt like his waist would break, but he somehow pulled through. C can you stop? Stop! Bang. No, perhaps he hadn't pulled through after all. Chong Myung began to strike the sword again. You Wudang bastards don't have one decent thought in those brain of yours. Bang. Using force to block that? That? Bang. Mu Jin's feet started to dig into the ground like a nail being hammered in. His body, hit by Chong Myung, was piercing the earth. You people preach that softness overpowers strength. Seriously, your mouths do all the work. Kwang. <gasps> a cracking sound came from Mu Jin's waist. Mu Jin was completely distracted by the pain in his lower back and his throbbing arm, which felt like it would break from trying to ward off Chong Myung's assault. But at that moment, a mixture of irritation and anger echoed in his ears. The most malignant voice in the world. Head! The head! The head! I told you to watch your head! Bang! 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 Mujin somehow blocked a series of downward sword strikes, but he was unable to withstand the power of Chong Myung's sword, and his own sword continued to rebound, bouncing off his head repeatedly. <gasps> Every time the sword hit his head, Mujin felt like he was being hammered into the ground. Still, it felt fortunate that he was able to block it. If he was being struck with the unsheathed sword, then he might have gotten some fine lines on his head by now. But the real problem wasn't his head. W waste There was an unusual and disconcerting sound coming from his back. Mujin clenched his teeth, thinking he would fold over and die from his back shattering. Uh, attack. Somehow. The enemy is more powerful than ever. It didn't matter whether this man was a robber or Mount Hua's divine dragon. Pride? What did that even matter right now? 
He had to be alive to have that. Fortunately, the guy in front of him was only aiming for his head. It was as if Chung Myung didn't even care that he was blocking it with the sheath. J just once. He just had to hit him once. If there was an unexpected counterattack, a gap would emerge, and Mujin was capable of taking advantage of that opportunity. No, even if he lacked the ability, he still had to do something. He only wished that he could move before his back fully broke. Head! Head! The sword flickered. Now! Mujin tried the best he could and pushed strength into his lower body. Having stabilized his form, he began to utilize his upper body. Flow. The basis of the Wudang sect is softness. Any powerful force can be rendered meaningless if its flow can be manipulated. Looking at the raised sword, Mujin bit his lip. Waiting for the sword to fall, he planned his move. He would tilt slightly, shift the sword away from the face, and... What? But why was it that Chong Myung's sword didn't seem to be coming down? Mujin was so heavily focused that time seemed to pass slowly. But then, something dark entered Mujin's vision. He looked reflexively and saw something rapidly approaching his face. Mujin smiled bitterly when he realized that Chong Myung's fist was the mysterious object approaching his face. That son of a bitch. Lies were the only thing that came out of his mouth. Puck! Your jaw, you bastard! Mujin, who had been drilled into the ground earlier, soared into the sky like a nail being extracted. Whish! Mujin's body spun in the air like a top for a long time before crashing to the floor. Unable to handle the force, his body rolled across the ground, dragging a long line before finally stopping. <sighs> Seeing Mujin foaming at the mouth and unconscious, Chong Myung clicked his tongue. People from the big sects are all like this. How could he seriously believe his opponent would only use his sword? This is why Mount Hua and Wudang need to step out of the mountains. Those who get stuck in the mountains always end up naive and dead. Think of this as a good experience. Chong Myung clicked his tongue as he approached the unconscious Mujin and kicked him. Hey, wake up! I need you to explain that sword... sword... what was it? Sword thing! However, Mujin didn't regain consciousness. Chongmyung quickly calculated how much strength he had put into his fist, as well as the fragile chin of Mujin, and nodded. Ugh, nothing can be done. He'll sleep soundly for three days. Did I get a bit too excited? Ugh, well, it'll be fine. There are others that I can get to tell me what I want to know. Then, Chong Myung turned his head. As Chong Myung turned to look at them, the second-class disciples of Wudang shuddered, taking a step back. That sword thing, does anyone here know about it? Everyone stayed silent. Everyone understood. However, someone needed to say something to answer the question. In front of them was a guy that would even slap a ghost if they didn't respond to him. You! And you! Chong Myung pointed to Jin Hyun and Jin Mu. Come here! They both looked at each other and reluctantly walked towards Chong Myung. This can't be happening. I can't beat him. A human who can knock Mujin into the air with one punch. Even if they all worked together, there was no guarantee they could win. What's more, their morale had already deflated. Would they even be able to work together and land any attacks on him? Chong Myung had a soft smile on his lips. That sword... sword what? Sword tomb. Right, right, sword tomb. Can anyone tell me what that is? Jin Hyun and Jin Mu stayed silent. Oh? You two won't speak? They may have lost the will to fight, but that didn't mean they would speak freely. It was the last slither of pride they held on to as disciples of Wudang. Ah, uh, well, fine. I admit it. The one who's supposed to speak is him. You guys never made a bet with me. Promises aren't meant to be kept by others, right? Jin Hyun was confused. Oh my, something very similar to common sense was actually coming from this man's mouth. Then look here. Yes? 
Here. What? What do you mean what? Huh? Chong Myung smiled behind the mask. It was a smile that sent a chill down the spines of these two Wudang disciples. If you don't want to speak, then wake up the guy that has to speak. What? Was he talking about Mujin? Huh? How? How could they wake up someone who had lost consciousness? This is what I've learned in my life. Chong Myung grabbed Mujin by the collar. You can't solve everything in this world with violence alone. That was right. Chong Myung was strangely saying reasonable things. But a weird light shone in Chong Myung's eyes. Most problems can be solved with violence. If you beat him until he gets up, he'll eventually get up or punch him down entirely. And you guys over there, don't speak of this. Never. Jin Hyun smiled brightly. It really felt like just telling him what he wanted to know would be better. Chapter 136 I need to have this even if I die. Jin Hyun, who moved away from the other disciples, looked at Chong Myung and gulped. Just what the hell is up with this guy? There was no doubt that the man in the mask was Chong Myung. He's called Man Hua's Divine Dragon. Who the fuck gave him that name? Man Hua's Evil Dragon or Man Hua's Demon is more appropriate or even Mount Hua's mad dog. These thoughts rang clearly in Jin Hyun's head. He had no way of knowing that Chung Myung had already earned the nickname Mad Dog within Mount Hua's walls, but he had no choice except to keep these thoughts to himself. He lost all curiosity concerning Chung Myung's unnatural strength. Rather, he was a hundred times more interested in what kind of experiences one had to go through to become so twisted. Chong Myung, who came close enough that others could not hear, quietly spoke. So, what is the sword tomb? For now, please put that down. This? Chong Myung shook what he was holding in his hand. It was Mujin's unconscious body. Put this down? You can hold on to it if you're comfortable. Jin Hyun no longer seemed to care. I just hope this is a dream. But there was no way that it was a dream. No matter how cruel a nightmare is, it would never be more terrifying than what is seen now. If nightmares are based on human imagination, then this could never happen. Because this had exceeded the limit. Don't waste any time. Just tell me about it. What is the sword tomb? Please, promise me something first. If I tell you, Will you return Mujin Sasuk and not hurt us? When did I hurt you? Uh, that was true. Anyway. Okay, yes, fine. But do you think I'll listen to everything you say? He was still the same as at the start. Jin Hyun sighed and began to speak about what he knew. This situation couldn't be resolved without giving up this information anyway. It's a grave. Grave? Chong Myung narrowed his eyes. Have you even started grave robbing now? Is the Wudang sect running low on money? It's not like that. Jin Hyun was curious how this man could twist every word he said upside down, but it felt pointless to question. The grave of untraceable seizing sword. Huh? Chong Myung's eyes widened in shock. Huh? Untraceable sword? Huh? He was the strongest swordsman in the world 200 years ago. Ah, right! He was a master that exceeded Chung Myung. To be precise, he was the best in the world. Chung Myung tilted his head. So, this sword tomb is his grave? Yes. And you're trying to unearth it? Yes. Chung Myung shook his head. Why? Huh? Is there a reason? There was a reason that Chong Myung asked this question. The best in the world was the most glorious title. Anyone who lives in the martial world dreams of standing at the apex. Even those that recognize their own failings and know they will never reach the peak still imagine themselves in that position at least once. The title of best in the world was a romantic dream 
all martial artists aspire toward. Surprisingly, however, many people pass through the position of world's greatest, even if there's only one such genius in each generation. Over a hundred years, there could be four or five that achieve the title of best in the world. In reality, there's no way there could only be one. There will always be someone that challenged a position at the apex of the world and overcome the previous generation. If such a thing frequently repeated over a hundred years, more than ten such warriors could win the title. Perhaps, if the war of the heavenly demonic sect had never occurred, Chongmyung would have taken the name. Many great warriors would flee when they heard that Chongmyung was coming for them. They would make up all sorts of excuses so that they could never face each other properly. They might have become stepping stones for Chongmyung's reputation if they hadn't fled. No matter what anyone said, Chongmyung was a swordsman that was even recognized by the heavenly demon. The Untraceable Seizing Sword he was one of the best in the world 200 years ago. Was he that powerful? Of course, he was called the best, but there were many strong people. The problem was that the one telling the story was from Wudang. Perhaps, if it was an ordinary person, such a story would be shocking. But there was no way that the Wudang would simply go grave robbing for such a person. The value of the tomb changes depending on who is searching for it. Jin Hyun explained. Recently, a robber broke into one of the Wudang temples. Over the course of catching and investigating the man, we were able to obtain a treasure map. And it's close to Nanyang? Yes. You know the rough location, but hadn't been able to pinpoint the exact location. So you were going to investigate. However, if the Wudang sect rushed in and began to search recklessly, then people would become suspicious. Right. Hmm. Chongmyung nodded his head. Makes sense. It did seem strange at first. Nanyang isn't a huge city. No. Once again, it is too small to draw the attention of the Wudang sect. The Huayong sect was able to survive until now because Nanyang is such a minor area that other sects have no interest in it. It was unbelievable that the Wudang suddenly wanted to expand their operations here. Still, it makes no sense to pick a fight with Man Hua, right? Well, we apologize. Jin Hyun couldn't say that they were collateral damage, so he apologized. Hmm, alright. Yes. What's in the sword tomb? That... Jin Hyun hesitated a bit before he opened his mouth. Do you know who the untraceable seizing sword is? The best in the world, once upon a time. No. Do you know his deeds? I don't. Chong Myung answered proudly. Why would he have been interested in a man that lived a hundred years ago when he barely had time to learn martial arts and drink his alcohol? Seizing sword. His title was quite literal. He didn't belong to any particular sect. He mysteriously appeared one day and challenged the swordsmen of the world. What's more, he had won every battle. It's a pretty obvious story. Starting from now, it isn't so obvious. After he won, he would always take his opponent's most prized possession as a trophy of war. Huh? He stole their swords away. Why? I don't know. Jin Hyun shrugged. How can we know the intentions of a person from 200 years ago? Anyway... He gathered all the swords of the masters of that era and then suddenly disappeared. If it's the weapons of masters... Yes, it was obviously divine weapons. Chong Myung made a strange expression. That's right. Those who attain a high enough level of martial arts can practice their techniques even without the help of divine weapons. But that's only half right and half wrong. It may not be needed, but having it was surely better. In addition, if they were masters of their era, they were bound to be in the highest position of their sects. Don't the high-ranking people always hoard the good stuff for themselves? I don't need these shiny divine weapons now, so share it amongst yourselves. Such thoughts are quite a rare thing. People have a hard time letting go of something already in their hands. Then all the weapons of each sect were taken away? Right. They just gave them away? 
I don't know for sure, but it seemed like a bet was made. If you lose, you give me your weapon. And if I lose, I return all the weapons I've taken. Anyone would accept such conditions. It was an inevitable bet. But everyone lost. Yes. Chong Myung nodded. And the sword tomb. After he disappeared, rumors about the tomb began to spread. The man gathered all the weapons he had taken and stored them in a single location. He then created a tomb and even left behind his martial arts. Those who seek the sword tomb will have the world in their hands. Ah, uh, it's fine. After that, the rest is obvious. Chong Myung had a gloomy expression on his face as if he had suddenly lost all interest. Just some ordinary legend and cliche story. And you think it's true? Yes. We didn't believe it until we got our hands on the map. It felt sophisticated. Ah, <sighs> enough. Obvious nonsense. Chong Myung shrugged his shoulders. So you're trying to dig up the tomb and get your hands on this guy's weapons and martial arts? Yes. Jin Yun had a regretful expression, and Chong Myung nodded his head. Oh, really? Yes. I see. Chong Myung, who was looking at Jin Hyun, grabbed Mu Jin by the collar. Huh? And slapped him without hesitation. Wh what are you doing? If the junior does something wrong, the senior has to be hit. If you were educated properly, you wouldn't be lying with such a straight face. Hey, wake up, you son of a bitch! Slap. Slap. Mujin's head was struck left and right. You're going to spit your lies at me? No, it's not a lie. You didn't lie, but it made no sense either. You're not saying everything, right? Take a look at what you did. I need to wake this bastard up now. Wh what are you talking about? I really did tell you everything. It was at that moment. Huh. Chong Myung's face suddenly appeared right next to Jin Hyun. Do you think I'm some idiot? What? Wudang is covetous of another man's martial arts? The Wudang sect? Oh my. If Elder Sambong heard this, he would jump from his grave to pierce your heads. What nonsense are you saying? Jin Hyun kept his mouth shut. And what? Weapons? Hey, dumbass. If you take all the weapons that were stolen, do you think the other sect would just say, Oh, okay, thank you, and leave you alone? Everyone would attack the Wudang sect to reclaim their stolen heirlooms. <sighs> Lies just keep pouring from this kid's mouth. Enough. What good would come from beating you? The one who deserves to be hit needs to be hit. Hey, wake up. Slap. When Chong Myung slapped Mu Jin again, Jin Hyun panicked and grabbed the hem of his robe. He, he might die. I already told you I wouldn't kill him. But, but he might really die. I know, I know. I know what I'm doing. Don't worry. How the hell could I not worry, you idiot? Even though Jin Hyun held Chong Myung's sleeve and begged him, Chong Myung continued to grab Mu Jin by the collar. Did you think that I wouldn't be able to tell that you were hiding information? The fact that all of you came here together shows there's more at play here. You could have just taken the map and come yourself. Instead, Chong Myung's eyes turned an eerie cold. You need to pay for playing with the lives of others. I won't kill you. Instead, I'll make sure that you never hold the sword again. Chong Myung was enraged, and Jin Hyun felt bewildered as his eyes trembled at the sudden shift in the atmosphere. This guy might really do what he's saying. If Mu Jin is crippled here, then Jin Hyun would live his life in regret. Die! Chong Myung's fist flew from Mu Jin's face. Frightened, Jin Hyun quickly shouted, Yak Son! The fist stopped. Pfft. Mu Jin's hair fluttered all around from the wind caused by the sudden stop. What? Y Yak Son! Yak Son? Jin Hyun continued, Yak Son is the goal. Yak Son? Yes. The same Yaksun who is said to be able to create a great deal of medicine? Yes. The Yaksun from over 200 years ago who was known as the most outstanding pill maker of all time? Yes. One of his pills is enough to raise the dead and give more strength than any supreme pill. Chong Myung's eyes began to glow. A fervent hope and ravenous desire. Jin Hyun was unable to answer and flinched. 
However, Chong Myung's eyes were already passionately ignited. The sword tomb is the tomb of Yakson? That Yakson? Y- yes. Hmm. <laughs> Chong Myung kept rubbing his lips with his sleeve. He seemed to have forgotten that he was wearing a mask. Yakson, right. If that's the case, then Wu Dan would definitely pull such a shit, right? That is absolutely diff. Is it? What? Where is it? At that moment, Jin Hyun witnessed it. The Taoist had lost all reason and given in to his desires. The terrifying energy flowing from the eyes terrified him even more. Where is it? Where is my medicine, you bastard? Why is it already yours? That, I really don't have an answer. Chapter 137 I need to have this even if I die. Chong Myung's eyes had gone wide. There had been countless times when he was obsessed with trivial benefits or wealth. But this couldn't be compared with that. This is a whole different case. Just who was Yak Sun? He was considered to be the greatest pill maker known in the world. Pill making is the method of producing medicine. In the past, Yak Sun's pills were said to even surpass the Shaolin sect Supreme Pill. The Supreme Pill. The Supreme Pill. Every famous martial arts sect is known to have its own method of developing pills to assist with cultivation and enhancing internal energy. What could be said about the effect of the pill that was created by giants with massive financial wealth and manpower like the Shaolin and Wudang sect? Nothing. They were just able to do it. However, Yaksun was a single man that studied pill refinement and managed to create pills that surpassed these two sects. For martial arts sects that risked their lives in the pursuit of strength, there was nothing more valuable than pills that had an even greater effect than those two sects. Any warrior that acquired Yakson's pills was said to have joined the ranks of masters due to their incredible reserve of ki. Even 100 years ago, when a rumor spread that one of Yakson's pills had surfaced in the world, there was no doubt that blood would be spilled for it. Those who set their sights on such things were vicious and didn't hesitate to slaughter others. And this wasn't just a pill, but Yaksun's actual grave. Then, the pill's alchemic recipe has to be there. A man that built his own grave would surely leave behind what he had achieved in life. There was no way that a person who achieved such greatness in life would have decided to bury his knowledge together in hell with him. He must have left something behind. If this sword tomb existed, there was a high chance that it held his legacy. I need to have it even if I die. No, to be precise, Mount Hua needs to get it. Why were the pills of Shaolin and Wudang famous? Because the strength they give is important when learning martial arts. Even if two people have the same skills, it is natural that one with a pill has more advantages. As a result, the Shaolin and Wudang sects invested huge sums of money and manpower in researching pill making and created some of the best pills in the world. Right. Just like earlier, Mujin was able to access an enormous reserve of ki that extended far beyond his age. But Mount Hua doesn't have a pill alchemy recipe. What's more, there are no pills either. Thanks to that, the current disciples of Mount Hua haven't even been able to take pills. They only had the plum blossom pills that Chong Myung used to relieve hangovers. And even those don't exist anymore. While Chong Myung was around, things would manage to work out. But without Chong Myung there to guide the training, the sect would begin to spiral down again. No, that's why they should have left it. At least something. Chong Myung looked at the sky. Would I have even known? There were plenty of books containing the sex martial arts, but why were there no books about pill making? 
What were the pill makers thinking by keeping that knowledge to themselves? Uh, well, it isn't important now. Cho Myung looked at Jin Hyun. Are you sure? Yes. So you're certain that the sword tomb is Yakson's grave? Jin Hyun coughed and spoke. Even though the untraceable seizing sword rose to the top of the world, he failed to be acknowledged by others because of his lacking martial arts. Despite his poor martial arts, he defeated all the masters of that time. Uh, right. Usually, when a person is the best in the world, the martial arts they practice would gain a name and reputation following the warrior's deeds. Yet, Cho Meng had never heard such things about this man. Thinking back, it is strange. That's because the untraceable seizing sword had a history of defeating the opponent without technique, relying solely on his overwhelming key. Even at that time, many were suspicious, but Yakson intervened and denied it. However, after he died, one of his acquaintances confessed the hidden truth. And only a few sects know of this. Yes. Jin Hyun sighed. Mount Hua would now be added to that small list of sects. No, with this, more intensity would be added. But it was unavoidable. A man's promise is heavier than a thousand gold. The honor of his sasuk shouldn't be sullied over some private gains. No, rather, if I don't talk, he won't let me go. The world may not believe that the Wudang disciples were threatened, but the disciples here knew the reality of the situation. Now I told you everything I know, so please, let us go. Well, of course, because I am a man that keeps his promises. Cho Myung smiled brightly. I'll send you off. I'll definitely let you go. But there was one more thing. So where's the map? Huh? Where's the map? You said you have it. Jin Hyun's eyes trembled. The... that... Jin Hyun shook his head, and his mind reeled. I said I was going to tell you what I knew, not that I would give you the map. True, I know that. So why? Cho Myung grinned. Think about it carefully. If I let you go, you'll just bring more of Wudang's disciples, right? Perhaps... You'll come charging in like a swarm of ants. Then, I'll end up as a dog being chased by chickens. No matter how strong I may be, there's nothing I can do alone against the Wudang sect. Besides, you don't even know the location of the sword tomb yet. There's no way you'll be able to search the entirety of Nanyang and find it. Cho Myung smiled and looked at Jin Hyun. It was clear that Jin Hyun was thinking. No matter how strong Cho Myung is, he cannot face Wudang head on and Mount Hua is too far away from here. Even if Chong Myung knew the truth, there was nothing he could do. So you can at least hand over the map, don't you think? Why? How did it come to that? Jin Hyun's face hardened. I, I cannot give it to you. That wasn't part of the deal. You won't give it to me. Yet, yeah, really? Jin Hyun's face turned blue. As he looked at Chong Myung, who was smiling while approaching. His mind went blank. <sighs> Despite being a Taoist, do you intend to intimidate and rob others? If you're after the map, Taoist? Y yes Who? Cho Myung clenched his fist. Crack. The sound of the cracking knuckles grinding rang in Jin Hyun's ears. How many times have I told you? Who am I? M Mount Hua... Our cute little Taoist doesn't seem to understand what I'm saying. I'm a passing robber. No, you bastard. What kind of robber steals on an empty mountain? Choose! Cho Myung's eyes shone. Give me the map and head to Wudang to get reinforcements. Or... Boom! Cho Myung struck the floor and a large pit was carved out of the ground. Or put your neck on the line and remain buried here until I find the sword tomb. His head tilted. Which one? Jin Hyun smiled very kindly. Isn't it true that a Taoist should know how to give up on his worldly desires? A Taoist should also know when to back down in the face of power. 
Chong Myung trudged down the mountain, checking the map over and over again. A dizzying array of confusing lines and symbols were written all over it. The complexity of the work made it feel like it was a genuine article. <laughs> the tomb of Yaksun? It's said that heaven blesses good people. I guess living a good life is really worth it. Somehow, it felt like someone was spitting down on Chong Myung from the distant sky. Stay still, will you? I haven't even touched the pill alchemy recipe or made people suffer yet. Chong Myung smiled happily and looked at the map. Signs and lines chaotically jumped all over. So you need to interpret this to be able to enter the grave, right? <laughs> Such an interesting thing. Judging from the map, it was clear that Yaksun was a person with great pride in his achievements. Otherwise, he wouldn't have made such a contrived method to hide his legacy. It was certain that anyone that could solve this problem would surely be interested in the grave. Yaksun must have been a man that was truly confident in himself. There's nothing wrong with it. Because Chong Myung was definitely interested in it. Chong Myung smiled and looked at the map. This is supposed to be a code? Maybe someone else would have had a hard time. But who is Chong Myung? <laughs> it was embarrassing for him to say it himself. But Chong Myung was once a person that each of the nine great sects was scared of, including his own Mount Hua. There was no way that he would be unable to solve such trifling puzzles. Chong Myung glared at the map with wide open eyes, the lines drawn on the... Chong Myung, who had stared down at the stupefying lines for a long time, finally put the map down with a satisfied expression. I have no idea what this is saying. Ugh. Was he a genius when he came to using his head? When did he ever do such things? Ugh. He glanced at the map a few more times with frustration in his eyes and shook his head. This makes no sense. Just looking at it hurt his eyes and gave him a headache. If this was the map, he could look at it all day long, yet not find a single clue. Chong Myung, who was worried, nodded his head. Meh, I don't have to be the one to solve it. Doesn't he have reliable Sayongs and Sasuks? Well, soon, the disciples of Wudang will come. Knowing that Mujin was defeated by Chong Myung, and the map was taken, the elders would also come to take a look. Even if it is Chong Myung, he wouldn't be able to deal with all of them. In the past, when he was the Plum Blossom Sword Saint, he would have even challenged ten at once. But the current Chong Myung was still far from the peak of his former life. Maybe there's around three days. The disciples would have returned and brought back Wudang's reinforcements within three days. Before that deadline, Chong Myung would have to figure out where the sword tomb was and get to it. We don't have much time left. Chong Myung began to run. If he can obtain the recipe for making pills, then Mount Hua can advance a step forward. Gaining a step meant adding another essential element to take the leap into the world. I need to eat it first! Chong Myung yelled, rubbing his still small dungeon. Chapter 138 I need to have this, even if I die. He isn't back yet. Can we just go now? Baek Chun's eyes twitched. Yun Jong. Yes, Sasuk. Do you know where he went? Isn't it obvious that he followed the Wudang disciples? Then, if we follow the path they took, shouldn't we meet up with him? Can we stop him? Yun Jong couldn't answer the question. Could they stop him? Stop Chong Myung? Baek Chun shook his head. It might just be better for us to wait. Seeing him return after making a mess of things makes my stomach turn. But if I saw it happening with my own eyes, I think my stomach might explode. <sighs> I understand. But it wasn't easy, and it was even reckless to wait around without doing anything. As time passes, anxiety increases. 
The disciples here have learned from experience that the longer it takes for Chongmyung to return, the bigger the mess he's causing. Baek Chun sighed deeply. <sighs> what sin must I have committed in my past life to end up with a junior like him? Of course, from an objective point of view, Chongmyung brought a lot of benefits to Mount Hua. Chongmyung humiliated the Jongnam sect, simultaneously gaining enormous fame for both himself and Mount Hua. Along with this, he also greatly improved the second and third class disciples' skills. If Baek Chun had to choose between a Mount Hua that had Chongmyung or one without him, he would choose the one with Chongmyung every time, even though doing so made him cry. But that's only when rational thought prevails. It is not easy to praise or compliment Chongmyung, considering how harshly he treated others. He couldn't have caused such a huge incident though, right? Hearing Jogul's words, Baek Chun and Yun Jung stared at him blankly. Jogul, who was startled by their gazes, waved his hands and made excuses. Oh, no, I'm not saying that he hasn't caused any problems, but he's the kind of guy that only causes trouble he can handle. So far, he's always fixed the problems he's caused. What sort of pain did we all go through to fix his accidents? Um, well... Jogul lowered his eyes. There were many things he wanted to say, but this wasn't the right time. It's not like he enters into those situations thoughtlessly. Jogul, who came from a merchant family, is sensitive to profits. One of the things he felt while observing Chongmyung was that each problem was caused for a reason. It might seem absurd to others, but it was sure to benefit both him and Mount Hua if Chongmyung did something. So he didn't feel like Chongmyung had to be stopped. Jogul let out a low sigh. Looking at the sour expressions on the faces of Baekchun and Yunjong, he held his tongue. It was a bit of a bummer, but he felt he might die if he spoke carelessly. But even knowing that it would be beneficial for them, Jogul understood the pain his Sayongs felt as they had to suffer until the moment that the trouble bears results. But Jogul turned his gaze away. Yu Yisol was sitting at the table having tea. She is one unique person. Yisol is the only one that changed the most these past two years, and yet she didn't change at all. It's a strangely remarkable change. Yu Yisol had never shown any interest in her seniors or sajils, but she showed infinite interest in Chongmyung. However, that didn't mean that her relationship with the others had improved. She only showed a different side of herself when dealing with Chongmyung. It's weird, truly. Jogul felt that this change wasn't necessarily a bad thing though. Over the past two years, Yu Yisar has grown even more beautiful than before. If such a person smiled more often, then Mount Hua would be overturned. Since he is Chongmyung, he would surely break Yu Yisar's head if she skipped training, but that couldn't have prevented her heart from pounding. Even now, since Chongmyung left, Yu Yisar hadn't spoken a single word. As a courtesy to the Sahyongs and Sajils, she remained near the group and didn't go off on her own. She just passed her time looking at the door, probably hoping for Chongmyung to return. Ah! At that moment, Yu Yisar's lips slightly opened. Jogul immediately looked at the door. Kwang! The door was smashed open. Yun Zhong's eyes twitched. I must have told him a hundred times by now that doors are for opening, not kicking. Shit, if he listened, then he wouldn't be Chongmyung. Chongmyung! Hey, you brat! What kind of mess did you make now? Speak up! There was an aggressive response from all sides. The disciples of Mount Hua quickly realized that Chongmyung was behaving weirder than usual. Normally, he would have spoken as soon as he burst into the room. But this time, he simply held something hesitantly as the others rushed to surround him. Hmm? As everyone looked at him with a stiff face, he cried out, Gather! Gather here! We already gathered up, though. While they stared blankly, Chomyung pulled something out from his sleeve and threw it on the table. Hmm? Baek Chun narrowed his eyes and looked at the parchment placed on the table. What is this? 
A treasure map. Treasure map? It seems like some kind of code to me. Yes. Baek Chun tilted his head and asked, What the hell is this? We need to decipher this. This? Yes. Who? Who? Obviously Sasuke and Sayung's. Baek Chun's eyes trembled. Chung Meng had left to beat up the Wudang disciples, came back with a strange map full of cryptic lines, and he wanted them to decipher it. Baek Chun glared at Chung Meng angrily and spoke. Start from the beginning. Explain what and how it all happened. I'm busy. I'll only say it once, so listen carefully. Chung Meng quickly explained everything that had happened. The, the tomb of Yaksun. Right. The pill-making master from 200 years ago. So this map leads to his tomb and this, uh-huh, right, and that. He trampled on the head of Mujin, the clear flowing sword, and stole this map. One of the three swords of Wudang. Baek Chun's cheeks twitched. What the hell was he thinking? It was no longer surprising to receive news that Chung Myung had defeated the clear flowing sword. Of course, it would normally be shocking for a third-class disciple from Mount Hua to take down a first-class disciple from the Wudang sect, let alone the fact that it was one of the three swords of Wudang, and Chung Myung defeated him without receiving a single wound. But Baek Chun was determined not to be surprised by Chung Myung's actions anymore. The real problem came next. So, you stole this from the clear flowing sword? Yes. Mujin. Ah, why do you keep repeating what's already been answered? Yes, I said yes. When Chung Myung shouted back, Baek Chun couldn't stand it and finally exploded. Hey, you crazy bastard. What the hell were you thinking? Robbing the Wudang sect? How do you plan to handle it if they come back? They'll surely come running with blood dripping from their eyes. It's fine, it's fine. I don't think they knew it was me. I was wearing a mask. How could they fail to recognize you just because you wore a mask? Do you think their eyes are for decoration? Or maybe they're all just blind? Everyone looked at Chung Myung with miserable expressions. Wu Dang, along with the Shaolin, it is one of the two great sects leading the world. And their influence went beyond Hubei out to the whole world. Considering the number of disciples and masters they had, it was a sect that Mount Hua couldn't afford to offend. If the Wudang were determined to strike them down, Mount Hua would be destroyed instantly. Perhaps, if Mount Hua was given some time to grow, it might be a match for the Wudang sect. But for now though, they should avoid any conflicts. Protecting one subsect itself was already enough of a burden. And what? Chong Meng wanted to rob the Wudang. He stole their treasure. I'd rather be punished for pulling the nose hair of an angel. This was a massive incident. Baek Chun's deafening voice echoed in his own ears as he felt lost and had no idea how to deal with the situation. That isn't important. It isn't. Sasuk! Huh? Chong Meng interrupted Baek Chun with a firm voice. Should we just head back then? Baek Chun shut his mouth. Are you sure you don't want a piece of this? Huh? Baek Chun looked at the map. The tomb of Yaksun. What if there was really some kind of pill in that tomb? Could he really just give up and let the pill and potential knowledge fall into someone else's hands? Wow, this is poisonous. If you took the bait, you would surely become addicted. But it was a poison they couldn't afford to avoid. Think carefully. If you only ever take the safe option in life, you will never get anything greater. Sometimes, you need to throw away your concerns and act without thinking. Gambling is necessary at times. Don't be swayed by overthinking. We need to make our move by gambling with everything on the line. And then, lose everything we have. Yeah, that's normally what happens, isn't it? Chong Myung flinched and insisted again. But the greater the risk, the better the chances of getting a huge fortune from the gamble. This is something we need to have, even if we all die trying. Don't you think so? <sighs> Baek Chun scratched his head violently. Damn it. He wasn't wrong. It was a gamble worth doing to save the sect. If Mount Hua could get their hands on that pill-making knowledge, it might solve one of the sect's greatest problems. 
What is the problem with the current Mount Hua? The martial arts of the higher-ups are rather weak, and it takes a long time for disciples to fully mature. At this point, the second and third class disciples of Mount Hua are strong, even compared to the first class disciples. However, that's only when comparing martial artists of the same sect. No matter how strong Baek Chun had become, could he face off against the elders of the Wudang sect? He would need to train for another 30 years to stand a chance. This is because, more than anything else, he lacked the key to support himself. Even if Mount Hua's disciples have developed their key more than most, there was a stark difference between themselves and the disciples of prestigious factions that grew up eating medicinal pills like candy. And the gap will only widen in the future too. However, if they could gain knowledge about pill making, it would solve that problem. <sighs> Beg Chun nodded and rubbed his face. He would rather swear to his heart's content after trying than miss this opportunity. This was a sweet cake that he couldn't help but sink his teeth into. The aftermath would be staggering, and if things went poorly, then Mount Hua could be overturned. Passionate blood-red eyes shined from Beg Chun. Damn it! How can we possibly let this chance slip by? Fuck! Jogol quickly followed up. Let's do it, Sasuk. You! Just stay still. We don't have time to think about it. Even at this moment, the Wudang are probably returning to the main sect. It's all over if they manage to bring reinforcements. Even if this means death, we need to reach the treasure before them. Yun Zheng remained silent. He merely looked at Baek Chun in confusion. The only one that could make the decision here was Baek Chun. Baek Chun's eyes had begun gleaming. Chong Myung. Yes, Sasuk. Is deciphering it enough? At most, we can decipher it. But what if there's another trap? Ah, just decipher it. I'll make sure to break through anything else. Are you sure? Sasuk, I'm Chong Myung. Why drag this out any longer? Is that so? Baek Chun's eyes didn't stop shining. Damn it. I'm a man too. I can't just let the Wudang have their way so easily. Even if the sect leader blows my head away, I'll get this done. Baek Chun turned his head around. Yunjong, Jogul, Yusame. Yes, Sasuk. We're staying up. Use any means necessary to decipher this tonight. Yes. The eyes of Mount Hua's disciples began to gleam. Over the last two years, Chongming had certainly corrupted the disciples of Mount Hua. Before the Wudang arrive, we'll have taken the treasure. The Soul Vitality Pill. Soul Vitality Pill. Soul Vitality Pill. Yunjong and Jogul stared at the map with ravenous eyes as they desired the legendary medicine. Chong Myung smiled upon seeing their fervent reactions. Wow, they've grown up so well. Isn't that right, Sayong? What? You damned... Sorry, I can't hear you very well today. Chong Myung had died, the disciples of Mount Hua, in his colors. Chapter 139 I need to have this even if I die. <sighs> Wei Leepsan gently rubbed his chest. It isn't getting better. He could tell from experience. The trauma his body took would likely haunt him for a long time. It was clear that a full recovery would be nearly impossible. Internal injuries weren't something that could be cured just by visiting a good medical practitioner. The wounds disturb the flow of qi within the body and can only be resolved by the person themselves. However, the wounds Wei Lipsan had suffered were deeper than expected and were tormenting him every day. I want to get better. When Mount Hua's disciples defeated the Wudang disciples, Wei Lipsan felt as though his injuries were washed away. The rush of emotions he had experienced made him forget all pain in his body. However, as the situation settled and he returned to reality, his body slowly began to ache again. Father, have a good night's sleep. Okay. Wei Lipsan responded to his son, who was outside the door. 
he couldn't allow himself to show any weakness. Wei Lipsan is the sect leader of the Huayong sect. The gate had just emerged from a great crisis, which was a chance for a new start. At this time, if news broke of the sect leader's wounds, then it would cause trouble for the Huayong sect. I cannot let that happen. This is a rare opportunity that they had finally managed to seize. However, if the Huayong sect missed this chance because of him, then he would never be able to rest in peace. Throb. Wei Lipsan grabbed his sides. Ugh. The pain from his internal injuries flared up from time to time, but perhaps because of his complex mood, the intensity had deepened. With a low sigh, he laid down on his bed. News of this event will spread, and the name of the Huayong sect will grow. My actions and how I perform will affect the people's perception of Mount Hua. So he could not allow himself to show his weakness. When the leader loses power, the sect loses power. They had just managed to defeat the Wudang disciples. Wei Lip San couldn't accept the idea that his lack of strength would cause them to undo everything they had just gained. Taking a deep breath, he grabbed his blanket. I need to sleep. He couldn't get a moment's relief, but he needed sleep. He still had a lot of work to do tomorrow. Life isn't so unfortunate. There was still one wish that Wei Lipsan held close to his heart. He desired to see the day that the Huayong sect rose up with Wei Soheng taking the helm as sect leader. Until that day, he would give his all to survive. If there was just one other thing he wanted, it was to see Mount Hua's disciples grow and spread the sect's name throughout the world. However, he felt that may be too great of a wish. Wei Lipsan pulled the blanket over himself. It was then, click. Huh? Sleeping already? Wei Lipsan smiled. Despite the man boldly entering the sect leader's bedroom on his own terms, without knocking, <sighs> I shouldn't hope for anything. It was only a few days, but Wei Lipsan had come to understand this guy's personality. No, he was still trying to figure it out. He was a man that moved at his own pace. What is it, young disciple? Is something wrong? As usual, Wei Lipsan thought Chong Ming was here to ask for something, but the response he received was outside his expectations. It's not me that has something wrong, but the sect leader, right? Chong Ming closed the door and walked inside. Since the urgent matters have become extinguished, I can clean up around here. Clean what? Your internal wounds. They need to be treated. Wei Lipsan's eyes widened. Are you saying that you, young disciple, will treat my internal injuries? Yes. Wei Lipsan looked at Chong Myung with curious eyes. There were only two ways to control and treat internal wounds. The first was to correct the twisted key flow with one's own key. However, Wei Lipsan didn't have the skill to heal himself. The second method was even more difficult. The twisted flow of key needed to be corrected by utilizing the key of another person. This method is ten times more difficult than the first. It made sense after thinking about it. Many warriors devoted their entire lives to overcome the difficulty of learning how to properly control their own key. Then, how difficult would it be to control their key through someone else's body? This was why. Wei Lipsan did not request a practitioner to heal his internal injuries even after the fight with Wudang had concluded. He believed that Mount Hua might not have a master capable of healing his injuries. He worried that it would make the relationship with Mount Hua awkward if he had carelessly made an impossible request. Yet, this young man said that he could heal Wei Lipsan's internal wounds. Young disciple, it isn't as easy as you think. Yes, I know. If you make a mistake, even the young disciple could receive a severe injury. Ah, as if I would do that. 
seeing the smiling face of Chung Myung made Wei Lip San's heart flutter. No, he doesn't understand what I'm saying. Were his ears blocked? <clears throat> Wei Lip San coughed loudly and said to Chung Myung, Look here, young disciple. I fully understand that your intention is to heal my body, and that alone fills me with gratitude. But this isn't something you can try. If something goes wrong, both you and I could get seriously hurt. It would be better not to try this until the urgent tasks are taken care of. No way. The longer you leave it alone, the deeper it gets. Something like this leaves a lot of after effects. We need to treat it quickly. No, you brat. If you make a mistake, I will die, you idiot. Why won't you listen to me? Wei Li San's eyes twitched. He's called Malhua's Divine Dragon. How the hell did this guy get such an exaggerated nickname? Divine Dragon was too strong of a title for this man. That title is something given to the one responsible for the success of future generations. How moved had Wei Lip San been when he first heard that the Divine Dragon had been sent to him? But this is the sort of guy that he is. For some reason, that thought brought tears to Wei Lip San's eyes. Taking a deep breath, he looked at Chung Myung. Young disciple, I don't know how to make you understand. I see that you mean well, but some things in this world cannot be achieved with good intentions alone. Thank you sincerely. Wei Lip San comforted the young disciple to dissuade him from trying it. Contrary to his appearance, he's a good-natured kid. Wei Lip San began to feel that Chong Myung wasn't a disciple of Mount Hua for nothing. You don't seem to understand what's being told to you. Huh? Lay down. Lay down now. I'm a busy person and I have a lot of work to do. Oh, no. I'm fine. I'm not fine with it. Why are you not fine? It's my body. I'll handle it. Enough. Please leave. At that moment, Cho Meng reached out and pushed Wei Lip San. With no time to react, he fell onto the bed, unable to resist. N no. Thud. Cho Myung grabbed Wei Lip San's hand and began to infuse his key. Wei Lip San's eyes opened wide. Hey, you crazy bastard! He wanted to scream right away, but he couldn't. He was unable to act at this time. Whether it was the one giving or the one receiving an infusion of key, it was taboo to speak as it could disturb the exchange of key. Since Cho Myung's key had already begun to enter his body, Wei Lip San had no choice but to remain quiet and pray to the gods of heaven and earth. However, it felt like the gods had betrayed him too. No, to be precise, the gods were unable to do anything about Chong Myung either. Look at this! Look here! It's crazy! <laughs> Was he speaking? The Wei Lip San just hear something. Was it the words kept in Chong Myung's heart? No way. There was no way that Wei Lip San had mastered mind reading. Wei Lip San, as hard as stone, turned to the side and looked at Chong Myung, who calmly grabbed his wrist and frowned. Maybe I just heard wrong. Well, luckily, it isn't completely damaged. Wei Lip San was wide-eyed. He, he's talking. Speaking while infusing key into another person was something that only a master with outstanding achievements could accomplish. Not even the elders of most sects would dare try it, but Chung Myung, a third-class disciple, was doing it. Am I dreaming again? However, the key entering Wei Lip San's body was too clear for this to be a dream. The heavy and robust key continued to flow. Ah. It was clean and clear. Chong Myung's key was clearer than anything Wei Lip San had ever experienced. If he had to put it into words, it was like pure water flowing through a valley. Water that was so pure, even the ground beneath it could be seen perfectly. A cool yet warm key continued to flow through Wei Lip San's body 
and began to caress the wounded area. Wei Leapsan closed his eyes without realizing it. Hold on for a little longer. It'll be over soon. It felt weird. Wei Leapsan felt more comforted by the key penetrating his body rather than the words of Chong Myung. The key of a Taoist. Chong Myung was drenched in the path of Tao, which Wei Leapsan had always admired. This young disciple is truly a disciple of Mount Hua. He could finally feel it. On the surface, it felt ridiculously light, which made Wei Leapsan frown. However, the pure key that contained the essence of Tao was proof that Cheng Myung was truly a disciple of Mount Hua. At that moment, Cheng Myung's key began to swirl around the wounded area and caress the damaged key flow. A warm key radiated within the body. Woom. The pain began to vanish and fade away. The pain tormenting Wei Leapsan for a long time was quickly disappearing and the blocked key was beginning to flow again. I'll direct it, so move your key as I say. Wei Leapsan couldn't respond to Cheng Myung's words. However, Wei Leapsan faithfully followed his directions and guided the key as Cheng Myung began to circulate. The first point, and then the second point. Wei Leapsan instantly followed the key flow to 12 different points in the body and analyzed his body again. No more. There was no trace remaining of the internal wounds that had tormented him. With just one stroke, the wounds that he feared would linger for life had been fully healed. Cheng Myung's key escaped from Wei Leapsan's body before he had even had a chance to feel it. As the pure and clean key returned to Cheng Myung, Wei Leapsan was left with a slight sense of regret rather than happiness for his body's recovery. Cheng Myung, who had regathered all of his key, released Wei Leapsan's hand. He slowly opened his eyes to see the young disciple staring back with a serious face unlike before. Young disciple. Mount Hua will remember. Cheng Myung, a third class disciple of the great Mount Hua sect. Mount Hua's divine dragon. He spoke to Wei Leapsan as if making a declaration. Mount Hua never forgets the grace received. The sect leader's devotion to Mount Hua over the past decade will surely be rewarded. Sect leader, please continue to guard the name of Mount Hua as you've done till now. Then, the Hua Yong sect's name will resound through the world along with the name of Mount Hua. At that moment, Wei Leapsan couldn't find any of the light-hearted demeanor Cheng Meng had shown previously. Overwhelmed by the heavy presence, Wei Leapsan stared at Cheng Meng blankly and clenched his fist. I. Emotions ran deep as tears began to fall. Wei Leapsan licked his lips and opened his mouth with a trembling voice, trying to suppress the tears in his eyes. I. I will make sure to do that. This was the moment when the Huayong sect declared its resurrection after a long period of hardship. Chapter 140 I Need to Have This Even If I Die The Day Was Bright Okay! Chong Myung got up refreshed from a good night's sleep and opened the window. <clears throat> the weather looks good! There was bright sunlight pouring into the room. Chong Myung smiled as he let his face bask in the sun's light. It felt good. When he thought of the beautiful future and the bright tomorrow that Mount Hua would soon have, it felt like his whole body was energized. He stretched his back, relaxing his stiff body, and opened the door. You are up early. Huh? Chong Myung's eyes widened slightly. Wei Leapsan was sweeping the front yard with a completely different face from yesterday. The sect leader is sweeping the yard? <laughs> Hearing Chong Myung's words, he smiled. I feel like I was reborn yesterday so I am trying to take care of the most basic things so that I don't forget this new life. Hmm, I see. Chong Myung smiled. What did it mean when the sect leader himself swept his own yard? 
It meant that he would lead the Huayong sect with a new heart and will. Did the young disciple have a good rest? It's been a while since I stepped that well. It feels so refreshing. Wei leaps on that out a low sigh. How is that even possible? Last night, Chong Myung had treated Wei Leepsan until dawn. It was just an hour and a half ago that he managed to go back to his room, and Wei Leepsan wasn't sure if Chong Myung had any time to sleep at all. So how could a person with a small one and a half hour manage to have a refreshing sleep? Ah, <sighs> it is embarrassing. Wei Leepsan had only thought of Chong Myung as a mess and a crazy man who was disturbing the flow of Mount Hua. But in retrospect, Chong Myung was the one who was leading his Sasuks and Saihyungs to rescue the Huayong sect, and he had even healed him. Furthermore, how could there be a man with such a pure key? The key which Chong Myung induced into Wei Leepsan was something he had never felt before. When he came into contact with such a pure key, it felt like he was seeing a different person. With such pure key, it was shameful to consider Chong Myung to be a bad person. Ah, I must not have the eyes to distinguish people. Wei Leepsan looked at Chong Myung and smiled. Mount Hua's divine dragon. He felt like a literal divine dragon on earth. He didn't show himself easily to others and hid his skills. Truly like a divine dragon does. Once he started to have a positive outlook, everything seemed good for Wei Leepsan. The bright personality of Chong Myung, who was looking at him quietly, also felt good. Chong Myung looked around and asked, My Sasuks and Saiyongs aren't out yet? No one except for young disciple has come. The sun is already in the middle of the sky. Middle? Wei Leepsan rubbed his eyes. No matter how he looked, the sun had just risen. But to say that it was in the middle, it must mean that he lives his life diligently every day. Since it came from the mouth of Chong Myung, Wei Leepsan thought it was good. But it still felt like something was wrong. The type of key and the personality one had had nothing to do with each other. It was just an illusion that those who hadn't experienced the Tao properly thought of. It was a common misconception to think that a person with clear key would follow the path of Dao. And it was even more true in Chong Myung's case. I told him to get it done by morning. Chong Myung strode towards the main building. Where are you going? Ah, there is something I have ordered the Sasuks and Saiyongs to do. Huh? Who ordered whom? Wei Leepsan tilted his head. Did I hear it wrong? Maybe he did. While he was arranging his thoughts, Chong Myung walked over and looked ahead. Without hesitation, he opened the door to the main building. Is it done? Huh? What is this? Chong Myung's eyes widened as he saw the scene in front of him. A strange sight unfolded before his eyes. Sa- Sa- Sasuk? Beg Chun, whose eyes were bloodshot, was scribbling something with ink on a long scroll. There was a piece of paper on the floor which already had something on it. No, it isn't this. It, it cannot be this. Crazy. With one hand, he was writing something at a formidable speed and his mouth was saying something else. He was nervously biting down on the thumb of the other hand over and over again. This, this shouldn't be. If that is the case, then something should come. Dud, dud. Thud. Chong Myung looked at Baek Chun with blank eyes and turned his head. In the background, there was the sound of Jogul sitting at the table and banging his head against it. I am trash, trash, I am trash, the only trash. Yun Jung was looking at the map and pulling out his hair. Already, plenty had fallen to the ground. And Yu Yi Sir was sitting in the corner, muttering something with a depressed face. It seemed like she was turning her surroundings darker too. What, what are you all doing? When Chong Myung shouted at the weird sight, the four of them looked at him at the same time and sighed deeply. You couldn't solve it? Th that's only a part of it. Baek Chun said in a trembling voice, still biting down on his thumb. I, 
I am a person who has answered countless things, but this time, I don't have the answer to this. Is that so? Beg Chun nodded at the question. This isn't something a genius can solve. We will need at least three people who are the best geniuses in the world to solve this. I'm telling you. The Wudang solved it. R really? Beg Chun coughed at it. The Wudang must have a great genius among them. Chong Myung's face turned pale. The Wudang solved it, but Mount Hua can't? Who said that? Some of the things were solved by the Sasuks, but the time and manpower we have is too tight to completely solve it. Hmm. Chong Myung tilted his head. Not just Beg Chun, but the others too had a rotten look in their eyes. It didn't seem like they could solve it, even if he somehow got them more time. Maybe we cannot do it. Anyway, even if we try, we cannot solve it like Wudang. This is beyond our ability. We need someone who has studied such things professionally. Studied what? Key usage, techniques, and operations. Ah, uh, who in the world will study such things? Right? Which is why we need to find someone quickly. In here. Baek Chun turned his head and looked outside the window. This is Nanyang. It was difficult to find people who studied such things professionally here. There is no way such a person would even live here. It was difficult to find people who studied such things professionally here. Right now, wouldn't it be better to head to a city and get someone from there? Right now? Chong Myung tilted his head. Seeing the way he tilted his head, Yun Jung retreated. The stiffness in the turn was higher than usual. And this meant that Chong Myung's head was properly heated. Chong Myung's eyes began to gleam. In a little while, people from the Wudang sect will come over to us like a pack of dogs. What did you say? Go to a city and find someone to decipher it? Baek Chun's heart sank. It wasn't because he was scared of Chong Myung who was getting angry. It was true that Chong Myung was a ruthless person, but he wasn't someone who bullied people for things they couldn't do. The reason Baek Chun was scared was simply because he could see Chong Myung's eyes changing now. That face meant that no one could predict what he'd do next. Eh, is there no way out? Oh, no way? Chong Myung smiled weirdly. Seeing that evil smile, the disciple of Mount Hua shuddered. Wh what are you going to do? I'll solve it. When Chong Myung reached his hand out, Yun Jung quickly handed him the map. Is it a real one? It looks like it. It is difficult, and there are rules to handle it. If there is more time, it can be solved. But right now, it is impossible. So this is the real one. Chong Myung looked at the map. Then it must be true that the Wudang guy solved it. Okay, then we cannot solve it, which means we cannot figure out where the sword tomb is while we are in Nanyang. And the Wudang disciples must have arrived back at Wudang by now, so they will be flocking back here within a few days, right? Chong Myung's face was turning more and more serious. Then we will end up being chased by those dogs, and we would have to watch the Wudang bastards take away the information and get stronger, right? The Wudang sect and the pills. It was the most horrific union, according to Chong Myung. Both the Wudang and Shaolin basically used martial arts, which represented balance. And such people get pills to enhance their power. That wasn't a nice answer. Considering Mujin, whom he fought yesterday, if he took the pill and his key increased, even if all the disciples of Mount Hua, except for Chong Myung, went to fight him, Mujin would still win. Hmm. Chong Myung frowned. What do we do? As Chong Myung looked like he was in deep thoughts, Yun Jung sighed and said, Chong Myung, yes? We cannot help it. We cannot deal with the Wudang disciples on our own, can we? Let's give this up. Sayung, what did you say? Uh, give up. No, before that. We cannot deal with Wudang on our own. We, right, we. Cho Myung's eyes lit up as he realized something. We cannot stop them. A weird smile began to form on his face. 
then it would be fine if it isn't just us. Huh? Let's raise the stakes. Yun Jung and Baek Chun were confused. No, what else is he going to do now? They both looked at Chung Myung with that question on their faces, and he responded with kind eyes. Well, we cannot stop the Wudang sect by ourselves. If they know that I beat Mujin, they will send out stronger people. Right. Then it's better for us to raise the stakes. What? We released the information that there is a sword tomb to the world. Baek Chun looked at Chung Myung with a blank expression. Is he insane? The existence of the sword tomb was invaluable. It was a treasure which they couldn't hand over even if they were given all the riches in the world. And now he was telling them to release information about it out to the world. The... Ah, oh, wait! Yun Jung held his hand to ask, but Baek Chun held him back. It sounds crazy, but if I think about it, it doesn't seem wrong. If the Wudang sect does come here, we can't stop them. But what if several sects gather here at the same time? They will have to handle all of them. Right. Yun Jung frowned and asked. The entire thing is an if situation, but it does have the best outcome. It can target the ones aiming for the tomb, and if the Wudang alone tries to go after the sword tomb, we won't have the power to intervene. But all the sects will flock here for it and... Yun Jong looked at Chong Myung. There are sects who will have the most fun when making a mess of a situation, right? Baek Chun bit his lip. It feels like everything is going to turn crazy here. An alarm was ringing inside his head. Baek Chun shook his head and looked at Chong Myung. Then how will we get the word out? Can we just go around and talk about the sword tomb? As if, like people would trust our words. Then, we don't have much time. Chong Myung shrugged his shoulders. No matter how much we talk about it, no one will believe us. We should have someone who is trusted speak about it. Who is that? Chong Myung smiled. It isn't a who, but where? Chong Myung turned around. Everyone should rest. I'll be back. Where are you going? Chong Myung answered without even looking back. Loyang!